problem that you may be presented with, okay? Uh, water is being drained out of a conical tank, okay, meaning it's a cone. Uh, the height is changing at a rate of negative 0.2 feet per minute. It's negative because the water is draining out, so the height is decreasing in the cone. Um, and the radius is changing at a rate of negative 0.1 feet per minute. Same thing. Think about a cone, your water level as it's going down, that radius of that circle is getting smaller. So those are both negative rates. Uh, so the question you may be asked is, what is the rate of change in the volume when the radius is one foot and the height is two feet? Um, and then another question is, well, does the rate of change in volume depend on the values of your height and your radius? Uh, does it matter whether I'm at the top of this cone or towards the bottom of this cone? Is the volume changing at a different rate? Anybody have a conjecture about that? Is the volume changing at a different rate? Or is it changing at a constant rate? It's inverted, so it's dripping out of the bottom. Yeah, the problem is the height of increase the Well, the, uh, let's see here, the, the height and radius are changing at the same rate. I'm asking, does the rate of change of the volume, are you losing more volume faster at the beginning or at the end, or is it the same? No? It's the same? Okay. Let's find out. We'll find out. Okay? This is something that we call a related rates problem. I don't think you're wrong. Um, I'm just saying we're going to find out. I just wanted to see what y'all would say. Uh, this is what we call a related rates problem. Um, so, your volume, your height, and your radius are all functions of time. So, when we take the derivative of our volume function, pi over 3 r squared h, we've got to take the derivative of that with respect to time not with respect to one of those variables. So that's why we did implicit differentiation right before we did this. Okay? So let's look at an example. Which is we're, we're going to take the context out for a second. Um, we're going to say that suppose x and y are both differentiable functions of t and are related by this equation y is equal to x squared plus 3, a parabola. We want to find dy over dt, okay, it's not dy over dx anymore, it's dy over dt, when x equals 1, and we are told that dx over dt is 2 when x equals 1 as well. So, we are going to take the derivative of our function with respect to t. So, the derivative of y with respect to t is dy over dt. We're not going to use the shorthand this time because... We only use the shorthand when we're differentiating with respect to x. You need to keep your variables in this one, okay? Uh, the derivative of x squared is still 2x. However, we weren't differentiating with respect to x. We're differentiating with respect to t. So then we have to multiply that by dx over dt, just like when we took the derivative of y, we had to multiply by dy over dx, or y prime. And the derivative of plus 3 is still 0, okay? So we want to find dy over dt when x is 1, so we can plug that in, and dx over dt is 2, so all we have to do is plug those values in. So we've got 2 times 1 times 2, which is 4. Now, typically with related rates problems, we have units. This one didn't give us any units to begin with, so we don't have to worry about units. Here, um, but we are talking about a rate of change, so you are talking about some unit over some unit of time. 